The Blaze of Glory was released in 2017. Although only a shotgun in name, it's the Bunko equivalent of the Nerf Alpha Trooper, a pump-action, side-loading, slam-fire rifle. It is arguably one of Bunko's best blasters, and today I finally got it. No God! No God, please no! 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 Bunko has been radio silent for some time. The last thing they released were a new pistol and recolors in 2018. I've been hoping for a comeback at the 2020 New York Toy Fair, but that never happened. So why did the eccentric blaster brand fail? There were five major challenges that Bunko faced. Mattel didn't do enough to address them, so let's talk about what happened. When you enter the very competitive toy gun market, it is difficult to survive solely on ammo that isn't the 50 cal foam dart. There's a reason why these brands still exist, and not those like Tech Recon. And yet, Mattel entered with their smart stick darts, aka straws, but unlike rubber bands, they were actually pretty good. The straws are more precise than most foam darts, and the smaller diameter allowed for a compact clip system design. And check this out. The plastic body is durable and flexible. You don't have to replace them as often as foam darts. Plus, the sticky tips are pretty fun. But Bunko was a new and upcoming brand, relying on a then unproven dart design that the established Nerf doesn't use. Imagine back in 2014, joining a foam wall armed with a Bunko blaster, but no one else carries Bunko because they don't know if it was worth buying. Thus, you can't use other players' ammo to exchange fire, not to mention that the loss of straws can be expensive. It's a similar issue that makes Mega and Vortex a niche in many Nerf games, but at least they had the support of the Nerf brand name. At Bunko's launch, the straws were priced too closely to the already expensive Nerf darts. Just compare the ultimate dart pack to Nerf's 100 pack. Also, Bunko was weird about the number of included straws. Some blasters only provided enough for one full load, while others had extra straws. Their standard refill pack prices should have matched the other brands, if not me in the middle. All blasters should be packed with extra straws for a full reload, a la X-Shot. After all, 48 is better than 15. Later on in Bunko's life, prices had dropped. The 40 round clips were 8 to 10 US dollars on Amazon. Later, their 200 straw pack at 20 US dollars was a decent middle ground price. But the darts were the least of their problems. Up next is reliability. Bunko's first flagship blaster was the Rapid Madness. It could fire at 600 RPM, had a capacity of 20 straws, and it sounded frigging awesome. The dart sensors in early models were prone to skipping darts. The Twisted Spinner is a slam-fire blaster. Despite being designed to shoot fast, sustained fire could cause the internals to break, rendering the blaster unusable. With the stealth ambush, the hidden shotgun could launch randomly, even when the lock was engaged. That's 3 out of their 7 first blasters. That's half your launch products. But it didn't stop there. The Spinsanity 3X was their first flywheel blaster, but its rotating mechanism was often unreliable. The crank force could not use 40 round clips, yet the flipbow, another top loaded blaster, could. Newer rapid menaces and the refresh system in the Halo MA5 still occasionally skipped darts. Older versions of the Bunko clips can sometimes slip through blasters. Not all of their blasters were that bad, but Bunko was a new brand that needed to prove the advantages of their smart stick straws. You can't do that when half of your first products, all of which are the big primary blasters, have questionable reliability. They made a very bad first impression. Speaking of which, up next is blaster designs. Look at Enshry Elite. Their blaster designs focused on usability and comfort. They also had the strong arm. Revolvers are the beginner blaster for any collection. They're compact, lightweight, reasonably priced, and can shoot multiple darts. In fact, the strong arm is reportedly an Amazon bestseller. Its successor, the Disruptor, is one of the first blasters you'll see on Amazon when you type Nerf. All of Nerf's competitors used practical designs and made six shooters. Bunko didn't. The double rush was about the size of the strong arm, but it was a shotgun you could only fire three times, not to mention it was difficult to reload and had the availability of surgical masks in a pandemic. They had no affordable flywheeler to compete with the Strife either. Some designs were just straight up dumb. In fact, almost all Bunko blasters had some kind of gimmick. Sometimes they were cool, other times they were strange. But to top it all off, there was no spring or primary. The affordable pump action or slide action springer is what persuades buyers to commit to your brand. Every brand has at least one. Bunko did have some pump action blasters, but they had no triggers. They were all slam fire blasters. Sure, the brake flip, flip bow, and crank force exist, 
but their unique farming mechs were not for everyone. The Halo Blaze of Glory was exactly what Bunko needed, Coop praised it, Blaster Hub gave it an 8.8 out of 10, and even the notorious Bunko hater Lord Drag liked it. Nerfers just had to wait 3 years for it. Bunko's philosophy was to produce fun blasters, reminiscent of Nerf's pre and strike days. But nerfing is like an FPS game. Players want their loadouts to give them every possible advantage. It's just that Bunko's products went way too far out of the left field. They faced a very competitive market. In Bunko's second year of existence, Nerf introduced Rival, a premium, high-performance blaster line. Rival became a mainstay, and it represented where the market was headed towards. Power! Nerf wasn't the only one. Air Warriors, X-Shot, and Dart Zone were making foam blasters that were not only cheaper than Nerf, but performed better. The latter two were even ballsy enough to make rival rivals. Another thing is reviewers. The Nerf community isn't very big, but I think nerfers don't give enough credit to reviewers like Coop and Lord Drag, whose subscriber counts seem to indicate that the hobby has a wider reach beyond the modding scene. Veterans like Coop prioritize usability and practicality, and if they find that your blasters aren't great for nerf wars, why would their casual viewers want to purchase them? And people always want more. More power, more usability, more value. So how did Bunko respond? The Dynamag was a lot like the Retaliator, and could have been a great primary springer. Problem is, 20 and 40 round clips would slip through the blaster when priming it. Because unlike everyone else, Bunko's target age was 6 and up. They wanted to allow younger kids to be able to prime the blaster, but that ruined its potential ammo capacity. You can see more of such compromises in many other blasters, like the lack of triggers and grips that were too uncomfortable or too small for adult hands. In trying to reach younger customers, they compromised their product's comfort and capabilities. Worse still, Bunko failed to tackle changes in the market, while smaller competitors gained their ground by offering not just value, but better performing products. For the US market, in 2017, a revised law on projectile toys didn't help. Supposedly pushed by Hasbro, Bunko blasters were limited to firing at 54 FPS. Prior to this, they were able to fire at over 60 FPS. To be fair, their blasters were already nerfed in other markets like Singapore, Malaysia, and Australia, so I'll leave this particular information up to your interpretation. But you can make the best dart type or all the overpowered blasters you want. None of it matters when you lack marketing. When they first launched Bunko, Mattel's marketing went all out. They had a collaboration with Devin Supertramp, and even had a blaster challenge on Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Sports Awards show, uh, featuring pro basketballers Stephen Curry and Rudy Gay. But here's a question, what's the last Bunko commercial you've seen? After their second wave of mainline blasters and some of their first Halo products, Bunko didn't market anything else. Just take a look at their YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook posts. The only commercial I could find with new blasters was a promo by Cartoon Network Mexico's villainous miniseries. Doug Watley was the Mattel executive who oversaw Bunko's introduction. He explained what happened in an article by Wall Street Journal. After Bunko began its initial marketing campaign, Hasbro counterattacked, with the help of Dude Perfect. Three years later, Bunko was finished. As Mr. Watley explained, We had some nice features that were good and a step up from Nerf, but not compelling enough to put us over the edge. They were able to thwart our entry in the category pretty successfully. But why did they stop altogether? Have you seen a commercial for the Colossal Blitz, which was crowned about Nerf's best blaster of 2015? Here's a question. Imagine that you're a parent, and your kid's classmate, A Star Boy Dave, keeps winning all of the exam awards. Your child is sad because they think they can never be anywhere as good as him. So what do you do? A. Assure them that grades aren't the end-all be-all and just do their best. B. Encourage them to go all the way and win. C. Tutor them and overcome the exams together. Or D. Ignore them. But whatever your parenting style is, it shouldn't be D. So Mattel, why did you stop? Look, Bunko wasn't a worthless good for nothing. Their ammo was capable, and despite their quirkiness, they had some very cool ideas. They had the potential to be a real player in the category. Bunko is like that weird best friend who went away. They do annoying crap and constantly make you question your friendship with them. But when they left, you remembered the good times you had with them. How fun they were to be around, and how passionate they were about their interests. Even though they were more than a little weird, and some people didn't like them, they did their best to be a good friend. But now, they're gone, and you realize just how much you miss them. Hi there, uh, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope that it was informative and accurate because I know my teachers want that. 
and special thanks to members of our Nerf for giving their thoughts and insights about Bunko. So let me know your thoughts on the video or your thoughts on Bunko in the comments below. If I miss anything, let me know as well. Also, do check out this skit that me and my classmates filmed together. It's not very good, but you know, maybe you'll like it. So, see you all again.